Searching for lost treasure sounds more like a get-rich-quick scheme than a solid idea. But for the people in this video, it ended up resulting in some of the most expensive discoveries in all of human history. From a massive hoard of gold unearthed in Afghanistan, to expensive coins found lying on the bottom of the ocean floor, here are five of the most expensive treasures that were discovered by complete accident. Back in 2013, a couple were out walking their dog on their large, rural Northern Californian property when something struck their interest. What they saw was a large, rusted metal can sticking ever so slightly out of the ground. They pried it out and were amazed when they discovered it was filled with gold coins. Thinking that perhaps there was more to be found, they grabbed their metal detector and got to digging. In total, they unearthed eight cans filled with a total of 1,427 coins, all of which were dated between 1847 and 1894. The coins were all 5, 10, and $20 denominations, and at first, they had no idea the bounty they were sitting on. They got in touch with Kagan's, a numismatics firm located in Tiburon, California. To their surprise, they found out that many of these coins were either in mint condition or uncirculated, meaning they were incredibly valuable. For example, one of the pieces was an 1866-S $20 double eagle coin with no motto. Its current value? Right around $1 million for that single coin. Once the discovery became public knowledge, theories began to emerge about how exactly the hoard of coins got there. One of the more popular conspiracies was that it was a hidden stash left there by Jesse James. Another theory speculates that Black Bart took the coins because he was known far and wide for robbing stagecoaches. However, in 2014, the U.S. Mint put out a statement saying that they do not have any information linking the Saddle Ridge coins to any theft occurring at the Mint. They even ended their statement by claiming, We've got a crack team of lawyers, and trust me, if this was U.S. government property, we'd be going after it. As it stands, the couple was allowed to keep the coins, and they sold many of them through Amazon. They used the funds to pay off some personal debts, as well as make donations to a few local charities. Of course, they've hung on to a few to keep as family heirlooms. Back in 1978, an archaeologist by the name of Viktor Saryanidi led a Soviet-Afghan excavation team. They happened to stumble upon the biggest and most valuable archaeological find of all time. Their discovery would become known as the Bactrian Horde. This collection of gold consists of roughly 20,600 ornaments of coins and other items. There are pieces made out of gold, ivory, silver, and other valuable materials. They were discovered across six different burial mounds, one belonging to a man, while the other five belonged to various women. The theory is that these burial sites belonged to a nomadic prince who lived there thousands of years ago. One mound belonged to him, while the other five belonged to his wives. But that is just a theory. Research done on the artifacts found that they all date between 100 BC and 100 AD. Medallions, belts, necklaces, and so much more were found. But, like all good treasure, these priceless artifacts would once again become hidden. Many in the region believed the treasure was lost at some point in the 1990s. After the discovery, the items were placed in the National Museum of Afghanistan, which was looted numerous times over the years, resulting in a loss of 70% of the objects held within. Many assumed the Bactrian gold was also lost. However, in 2003, it was discovered that the gold was being held in secret vaults underneath the central bank building in Kabul. Authorities learned that in 1989, the president of Afghanistan, Mohammad Najibullah, ordered that the gold be moved from the museum to an underground vault underneath the bank. The doors of the vault were then locked with five keys distributed to five trusted people. 
In 2003, the government wanted to reopen the vault after the Taliban was deposed. However, the five keyholders could not be immediately located. Their identities were intentionally kept a secret. An issue was decreed to proceed with safe cracking of the vault, but before that could be carried, the keyholders voluntarily came forward to open the vault once more. And upon inspections, it was found to be complete. Through an arrangement with the Afghan government and France, the collection was allowed to be displayed at multiple prominent museums around the globe for all to see. From 2007 to 2009, the gold was displayed at the Musée Guimet in Paris, the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., and at several other locations. It remains the single most impressive hidden treasure ever discovered, and today, it's safely tucked away. It was like any other day back in February of 2015 for a man named Zvika Feyer. The sky was a bit overcast, but he wasn't about to let that ruin his plans to go scuba diving. He went diving in the ancient port town of Caesarea in Israel and definitely wasn't expecting anything spectacular to happen. Shortly after getting in the water, he looked down at the sand and saw something shimmering. He had gone diving in this particular area dozens of times in the past and never saw anything other than some fish and the scattered remains of a shipwreck. What made this morning different was that the previous evening, a violent storm blew through the area. It stirred up the ocean floor and changed a substantial portion of the underwater topography. By morning, it looked as though the storm had settled, so he didn't think much of it. Initially, Fayer assumed the glimmer came from a discarded candy wrapper, like what you would find covering chocolate coins. He picked it up and quickly realized how wrong he was. It wasn't a candy wrapper. It was a genuine piece of gold with Arabic lettering on both sides. Fayer continued sweeping the area, pushing more and more sand aside, until he found another coin. To his surprise, he just kept finding coins. Clearly, this was the bounty from the shipwreck that had sunk so long ago. Now, while you would expect most treasure hunters to take their bounty home with them without a second thought, Fayer wasn't like that. He contacted the Israeli Antiquities Authority and told them to come to the site right away. The investigators were naturally skeptical when they arrived. In fact, they even yelled at Fayer for taking the coins out of the sea. He had to explain that another storm was coming and he didn't want the bounty to become lost once again. With the cooperation of the IAA, Fayer and his buddies went back to scuba diving to secure more coins. A few days later, they retrieved hundreds more, and by the end of the excavation, they had found over 2,000. The coins remained in pristine condition, likely due to the temperate Mediterranean water. Now, this discovery has rewritten history a bit. They suggest that the city of Caesarea continued to be a hub of commerce when it remained under the control of Muslim caliphates long after historians assumed it had faded from glory. Since that time, Fayer and his diving friends have continued to work with the IAA to recover other treasures around Caesarea and in other locations around the Mediterranean coast. On June 8th of 1985, demolition work began around the foundation of a telephone exchange building in the town of Schroda. During this excavation, a stash of gold and silver coins were found among the debris. An impressive find at the site was a vase filled with roughly 3,000 Prague Groschen, a type of silver coin used in the 1300s. Despite the discovery, no serious archaeological study was conducted at the time. However, three years later, on May 24th, another demolition occurred around the same time. This discovery was even bigger than the last. This stash consisted of silver and gold florin coins. This time, archaeologists investigated the area, but not before a few enterprising individuals scoured the municipal landfill where the deposits of the demolished buildings were placed. Some people had already taken parts of the treasure for themselves. It was at this point the government announced a plan to buy back any of the items that had been taken. For those who refused to give back their portions of the treasure, a criminal investigation began. 
While many of the looted items have been found, it is believed many more are still around there, or perhaps have been sold. From what has been found, there is a king's worth of treasure. One of the most valuable items include a gold crown, which likely belonged to Blanche of Valois, who was the first wife of 14th century emperor Charles IV. Additional highlights from the find include two gold pendants dating back to the 12th century, a ring with the heads of dragons imprinted on it, and a ring featuring a star and a moon. Historians believe the bounty likely belonged to Emperor Charles IV. There is a strong belief that he pawned these items to raise money to support his claim to the title of King of the Romans. The treasure that has been recovered is on display at the Regional Museum in Schroda Schlaska. On December 8th of 1949, three brothers were working together around a tile factory located near a railway station in Panagiriste, Bulgaria. They were searching for clay, but came across something much more valuable. One of the brothers noticed something that looked like a whistle sticking out of the ground. It was accompanied by several other objects. They didn't quite know what they had, so they took the items to the mayor's office. It was at this point they discovered it wasn't actually a whistle at all. In fact, it was a solid gold ceremonial drinking horn that dated back to the 4th century BC. The other objects they had found through digging were a collection of golden vases, dishes, and decanters. In total, the brothers had discovered about 13 pounds of 24 karat gold. After some studying, it is believed the objects belonged to Suthis III, who was a Thracian king during the time period the objects belonged to. One theory that has emerged about why the artifacts would have been buried in such a random place is that invasions by the Macedonians or Celts would have occurred at around that time period. Many believe they were hidden to protect them from the invading armies. The treasure remains one of the best surviving artifacts we still have from Thracian culture. As a result, the treasure has been displayed at numerous museums around the globe. The collection is currently being held at the Plovdiv Regional Historical Museum, and it is the centerpiece of the Thracian art collection. It's amazing to think those brothers would have been ecstatic to come across some clay, but instead stumbled across one of the greatest finds of treasure to take place in the region. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.